Hey everybody, it's Javad, and uh, like many of you, you've probably been bored on quarantine. Um, not as bored as I used to be, things are definitely picking back up, but um, I have been doing a lot of cooking, and I've uh, been uh, making big batches of food. Maybe you saw that macaroni salad I made the other day, uh, which was about 200 portions. Um, and uh, so a lot of you have asked me about this pork recipe, my slow cooked pulled pork and uh, you know it's just Sunday and we're just hanging out around the house uh, I'm about to go out to the wood shop and work on a project but I thought uh, I'd get some pork on the heat and uh, since so many of you have asked I might as well make a quick little video uh, highlighting um, how you can do it too so uh, this is a simple recipe um, my, my cooking philosophy these days is really um, good salt, good uh, salt seasoning, good amount of seasoning that you don't have to put too much, but just right is good uh, and just execute well. So this recipe is mostly about seasoning and execution. Uh, the meat is actually a really crappy meat. This is a, often referred to as a pork butt or a pork shoulder. Uh, if it has skin on it, it's, it's sometimes referred to as a picnic roast. Uh, this is a bad cut of meat. It's it's filled with connective tissue, with ligaments, with fat, and not marbled fat, but just big chunks of fat. So if you just slice this up like steaks and throw it on the grill, it's going to be tough and fatty, and it's not going to be good to eat. But if you execute it well and you cook it at a lower temperature, but mostly you just cook it a lot, uh, the temperatures can vary, then all that connective tissue will melt out in the form of flavor. The fat will melt out and render out and the meat will become fall apart, tender and delicious. And you will be left with uh, possibly one of the most de delicious meat preparations humans have ever known. So this meat, um, so actually my, my neighbor Taylor bought this and it's 20 pounds. They sell just like this at Safeway or any grocery store. Um, I recommend sticking to pork shoulder or the pork butt. Um, it's not actually the pork's butt, it's uh, the shoulder. I, it's like the butt of the leg, I don't know. So, um, but it's, it's this area right here, in case you wanted to know. And um, so Taylor paid a buck 40 a pound for this. It's readily available at Safeway anytime for two bucks a pound. I've bought it for 99 cents a pound. So this, this, this portion of meat is, uh, 20 pounds, if you served six ounce portions, and it's it's not gonna be, you know, it's gonna lose a lot of weight. But this could easily fit feed 30 to 40 people big, healthy servings that um, probably only like bigger men could eat. Um, so, you know, th this could literally feed half your neighborhood. And, uh, but the cool thing is when you make it, you can portion it out and it freezes really well. So you can freeze it and you know one pound chunks and pull it out for dinner this is so good in tacos it's basically carnitas um i love doing um so i throw in a fry pan with 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 an egg fry it up stick it in a tortilla with some salsa and some cheese i mean it doesn't get any better than that you can make quesadillas with it you can add barbecue sauce to it uh, you can put it in chili you can put it in a soup. You can just put it on top of rice with beans. It's amazing. Uh, so cheap, easy. I'm going to show you how to do it. And, um, and I hope you give it a try. So all you really need is this pork and salt. If you just start with that, the literally two ingredients, you can make, I'd say probably this 95% as delicious as possible. Um, I'm going to throw a little couple extra things in it to show you what's possible. But, um, you know, if you're, if you're quarantined up and you can just go and buy this and you have some salt and maybe a little oil, that's literally all you need. And uh, then I'm going to show you how to cook it. You can do this all in an oven. You don't need a barbecue or a, a smoker if you don't have one. However, um, I do a combination. So I'm going to do uh, the bulk of the cooking, about 75% of the cooking in the oven because it's... Uh, ovens are cheap and easy and they don't make smoke and this would this would burn up a lot of pellets um, pellets are a lot more expensive than electricity so um, 
and, and it's just as good. So the, the pellet smoking that I'll do at the end, how I'll do it today, uh, will add that smoky, delicious flavor. Um, but it's still really good even if you only do the oven. I mean, it's, it's gonna be still amazing. So don't feel like you have to, to get the smoke on it. But if you have a pellet smoker or any kind of smoker, then you can definitely uh, do the preparation I'm doing today. So the only things I'm adding to this are a bunch of garlic, sorry Gary. So I've got one whole uh, head of bulb of garlic and all I do is I, I break it apart, I smash them. So you end up with a smashed garlic like this and you just simply take the paper off. Okay, this is ready to go. Um, little tip, I always have like a wooden bowl like this that I throw all my trash in, it's awesome. That way you're not constantly going back and forth to the trash can possibly contaminating the kitchen. Very convenient as well. Uh, good to have a drink or refreshments. Beer or wine are great. I've got a aha. Thanks, Angie. Um, <clears throat> all right, so I'm just gonna throw this garlic in the pan like that. Uh, the garlic will cook for the whole time that the pork is cooking, so it's gonna break. I mean, the garlic will just end up being in the meat. You won't actually taste chunks of garlic. And then you wanna just just put a layer of oil on the bottom of the pan uh, just so it doesn't stick at any point. And then we're gonna put more oil on top. So you want a knife or something. So pork is always packaged like this. And you'll notice if you can get it like this with a nice fat cap. So there's a nice thick layer of fat on the top of this. That's all flavor. It's gonna render out and then we're gonna crisp it up so it'll be delicious. So. Um, just generally open it like this from one end so the juices don't run out. So this, this one that uh, Taylor bought is boneless. You can do it with the bone, um, doesn't matter to me. Um, the bone actually theoretically adds some flavor, but um, it's, not, it's not necessary, so. So we've got this uh, nice big chunk of meat and then we've got the fat cap. So we're gonna take our knife. You're gonna get a little messy here. We're gonna make slices, kind of like in the cartoons you used to see with the ham sliced on top. And uh, I'd say go about a three quarter inch deep in this case. This fat cap's about half inch deep. So I'm going just slightly deeper than that. Um, so these cuts accomplish a couple things. One, um, the, the crispy uh, parts of the meat that are exposed to the heat are really delicious. So that's that gets really rendered down and uh, it gives you that kind of crunchy, crispy texture that you like to have mixed in with your soft, tender, succulent pork. Uh, so it gives you more surface area for that. And then it also gives you um, more service area for, for seasonings. So honestly, you don't have to do it, but it's, su it's a super easy step. And uh, I like to do it when I can. So I'm gonna pull out the other one here. Just open this bag up. Not a lot of juice in this bag, so thank you, Costco. Just stick that in your bowl. All right. Get this done real quick. Take your anger and frustration out. You know, get it all out on the meat. So it doesn't have to be fancy, so stick that in there. So just wash my hands real quick. Probably sick of washing your hands, but in this case, uh, the pork is a good reason. All right, so uh, like I said, you could just put salt. This is just a uh, regular table salt. Um, so at, at this point, we're gonna add a lot more salt later because we're, we're gonna season this to taste well. Uh, well it's, we're gonna season it to taste amazing. But you wanna add a little bit because uh, meat does actually tenderize, uh, salt does actually break down and tenderize meat as it cooks. And so I'm just using some of this carne asada seasoning. This is by El Mexicano. It's a, kind of a popular brand here. Uh, you can buy it in the Mexican section of the grocery store. And uh, it's, it's just basically, uh, lemon pepper, 
salt, paprika, garlic, sugar, cumin, uh, onion, black pe pepper. Um, so, uh, you know, nothing, nothing crazy, but uh, it does add a good flavor. And the nice thing is it, it cooks and crisps, crisps up real nice on the top because it has sugar in it. So that sugar caramelizes on the top. And again, you can't really add too much at this point. So go, go real generous. Um, here, I'll show you. So that's about what it looks like. All right. And then the last thing we're gonna do, we're just gonna cover this in foil. And this step's important because we're actually gonna steam and slow cook this meat. And that steam and heat really uh, cooks, breaks down the meat and um, you know gives it that soft, tender texture. You just wanna put a little slit on the top just so it doesn't, um, all the steam doesn't get trapped in. All right, so now we're gonna go stick it in the oven, 350. Um, and this should, should be about six hours. So the goal here, um, and usually I'm, I, when I'm cooking I'm, meat, I'm always checking the temp, internal temp, but uh, internal temp is not a factor for this cooking style. So you're gonna take this meat to about 200 degrees and the meat is just gonna render and cook and continue to break down at that temperature. Um, temperature cooking is really only important when you're cooking a steak to, to a kind of a temp, like a medium or medium rare or, or um, medium well, whatever your choice is. Um, that's, that's when temperature is critical because you don't want to overcook or undercook the meat. Uh, chicken you can take to what, 160, 165, that's good. So we're not worried about temp, we're just worried about temp, oven cooking temp and time. Uh, that's what we're gonna use on this. So let's get this in the oven. All right. <clears throat> So I have it set to 350, and uh, I'm gonna stick it in the middle, middle of the, the oven. But if you want, you could you could do like 250 to 300. It will cook slower. I really don't think it's necessary. Um, we're not gonna dry this out or anything like that. This 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 cut has so much fat in it that. Um, you literally can't really overcook this. At some point, it just turns into like jerky, uh, which is still be good. Um, so when I, even when I cook it, I'll put it in a fry pan and fry it up and crisp it up, and it's really good. So anyways, throw it in. So I'm gonna set a timer for about five, let's, let's try four hours. All right, and then I'll check on it in four hours. And then uh, once I'm ready to put in the smoker, um, we'll be back. All right, thanks guys. All right, we're about three and a half hours in. Yum. So everything's cooking nicely. That top fat is rendering and getting crispy. So I'm gonna give it about another hour and a half and then we'll get ready to put it in the smoker. Hey guys, all right, it's Javad, I'm back. It's been four hours and the pork has been roasting in the oven at 350. Again, you could, you could do a little lower if you have more time. I think 350 is a good ba balance. If you try to go too much higher than that, um, it's, gonna, it's not gonna cook uh, right. So you, you don't want to um, burn the outside and still have the inside uh, uncooked. So I think 350 is kind of the upper limit. Uh, 250 is probably lower. Um, you could go 200, 250, but it's gonna take like 15 hours. So uh, 350 gets it done in about four hours. So at this point, we want the pork shoulder cooked all the way through. Um, it's not gonna be tender, it's gonna be real tough. If you ate it like this right now, I mean, you could eat it, but it'd be real tough. It's not nearly as good as it's going to be. So. What we're gonna do now is we're gonna slice it in about one and a half inch thick slices, put it back in the pan with all the juices, and then we're gonna put it in the smoker and then let the smoker do its thing. Smoker is heating up right now at 350. So I wanna show you guys the pork and what it looks like when it comes out of the oven at 350. So, there you go, beautiful. 
So you can see the all the juice and fat that rendered out, that's flavor, we're gonna keep that in there. And then you can see how we cut the, the fat cap and you can see what's happened. So that's shrunk, rendered out, and it's starting to crisp up. And, and so this, all these yummy bits will be mixed in with all the rest of the meat. Um, and so we're gonna take these out and slice them now. I think what we can do is we'll just slice them right in the pan. So uh, be careful not to scratch your Teflon. But like I said, about one and a half to two inch thick slices. We just wanna break this down and now we want the smoker, the heat in the smoker to access the meat on the inside as well. So the meat is cooked. Um, like I can feel the, the uh, gristliness of it, just cutting it right now. So again, this is not what you wanna eat, but um, we're well on our way. So I think we're gonna, I think we'll need about three hours in the smoker, give or take. But uh, we're just gonna let the meat tell us um, how it's doing. Uh, if, if it's falling apart and it's delicious and what we wanna eat, then we're pretty much, that's pretty much the point where we're gonna call it done. All right, so I got one piece sliced up here. Now I'm slicing up the second piece. There's all this juice and fat inside the pan. Um, now a lot of the juice will evaporate off, but the, the good part, the fat will remain in the pan with the meats and continue to, to flavor the meat. Um, it's probably isn't the kind of thing you wanna eat every day, but um, it's a real treat every once in a while and it's very delicious, so, all right. So everything's sliced, just show you here. So you can see the, the pieces are all sliced and ready to go on the smoker, okay? And then I'm just going to, at this point, put a little bit more of that, uh, Carne asada seasoning on here. Just uh, sprinkle it on. And we're gonna keep adding this throughout the cooking process. So you, you wanna, you really wanna kinda wait till um, towards the end to really put a lot of seasoning or salt on it because that's at that point, you know what it's actually gonna end up tasting like. So you, there's really not a need to put any more salt on it at this point, but um, you know, this seasoning, adding it in layers, the seasoning flavor develops as it cooks. So um, we put some in the beginning, we put some now, and then towards the end, we'll, we'll add some more. Um, and then right before we want to take it off and consider it done. So I'm going to head out to the smoker now. Alrighty, so um, I have a Pit Boss pellet smoker, uh, similar to a Traeger, uh, even a normal, like, uh, barbecue will work. I don't think it'll be worth doing this in a gas uh, propane grill. It's just not going to give you that smokiness that you want. You might as well just finish it off in the oven. Um, but any kind of wood fired, charcoal fired smoker is going to give you the smokiness that you're looking for at this at this stage. So it's set to about 350. It's going to cook in here. And I still have this foil to lightly cover it. So at this point, we just need to stick it in and let it do its thing. goal here is to add that smoky flavor uh, like, like we've been talking about and so we're going to give this uh, a couple more hours so you know I'll, I'll come back in about an hour and we can check on it and see how tender it is um, but what's going to happen is that the top exposed parts are going to brown and, and cook the whole thing is going to continue to cook and render out and get more tender and then we're just going to flip and rotate that and as we do that after a while we're going to start seeing the pieces just start falling apart um, and that's how we know we're, we're making progress. All right, guys, it's been about an hour and uh, we're gonna check on it now. Oh yeah, look at that. So it's definitely cooking and doing its thing. See what I was talking about? The top part's browning. And when I start flipping them, you'll be able to see that. 
and the juice is bubbling and rendering so the, the water is evaporating but leaving all the flavor and fat and juice uh, well not the juice the, the fat and, and flavor so what I want to do at this point now is just start rotating these pieces so you can see the bottoms aren't browning nearly as much but they're down in the liquid uh, basically braising in their own juice and fat you can see it's starting to get tender it's already starting to pull apart especially the the pieces that were on the, the sides and then we'll get the the tops down in the render so that can braise might help to pull it out a little bit so now we're going to let the tops brown here while the bottoms do their thing in the juice Smells amazing. I'm sure it looks good as well. So I'm going to come back in about a half an hour, 45 minutes. Whoops. Lost the piece. All right, I'm going to come back in about a half an hour, 45 minutes, and then we'll just keep rotating it for the next few hours. All right. Hang tight. All right, so it's been about 30, 40 minutes since the last time we checked it. Let's see how it's doing. We want to see that uh, top layer really browning, caramelizing, and everything getting more tender. I also took the foil off the last time because I really wanted to start getting that heat. Ooh, looking good. It's starting to get really tender. Look at that. Now so we just want to keep rotating it like this. It's getting to a point now where it's just going to start falling apart, so really just more stirring it than anything. But some of the pieces hold up better than others. Yeah, look at that. So even if it's looking like it's getting a little brown on top, as soon as you put that back into the liquid, it softens back up. So we just want to repeat this process enough times to really just add that texture and flavor and see there's still some pieces of fat like this and those are just going to keep melting away as things keep cooking so make sure to flip everything it smells so good this is turning into the pork that we want so all right let's check back in and another 20 30 minutes All right, it's been about another half an hour and uh, this is getting really nice, let's see. Oh yeah. You can see it's getting real tender. This is just falling apart here. This is what we wanna see. So at this point you can just start breaking the meat up. See some of these pieces, these, these were bigger, thicker pieces that were in the middle, still aren't quite as tender. We're gonna let those keep cooking. This is one of them, but if we can break it up, the smaller pieces cook faster, and it is uh, getting tender enough to do that. I mean, you can see I can just pull, you know, break it apart pretty easily. But this stuff that is good just falls apart when you touch it, and that's really what you're looking for. So this, this you could eat now just like this. It is tender. There's some slightly firmer pieces, and uh, a lot of this is just falling apart. But I'm gonna let it go for like another 15, 20 minutes, and just let some of these bigger pieces break down, and let the rest of this just keep cooking and getting smoke. Um, yeah, see that piece is a little, it's totally edible. You could eat it with a knife and fork, but the idea here is just have tender, succulent pulled pork. So I think the next time I come back, we can take this off and we can do the final seasoning and uh, have dinner. Oh, okay, well I gotta try it. Oh my god. 
It doesn't even have all the salt that it needs, but it's so good. I'm hoping by eating this and showing it to you that you're going to want to cook this because you won't be able to resist. All right. All right, it's been yet another half an hour or so, and let's check on it. I just stirred it, but I wanted to uh, show you guys what's going on. So we just keep moving it around like this. You can see it's just falling apart, breaking up. I don't want to lose any. And some of the, uh, the pieces that aren't quite finished, I'm putting them around the outside of the pan. Because as you can see, the, the heat builds a little bit more on your outside. But for the most part, this is right there. So I think another 15 minutes or so, and it's going to be good. So it's important to do a taste test. And I have two taste testers here. So Sophia, Layla, you guys want to try some? Yes. All right, come on over. All right, what do you guys think? You like it? Mmm. Does it have good seasoning? Yeah. Sophia likes it too? I give it a thousand. A thousand? Wow, that's pretty good. Alright, well, you can't, I mean, a thousand's pretty good. A thousand out of ten. Uh, yeah, so, anyways, uh, a little bit more, and then we're gonna finish this up, and whoa, 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 easy. Uh, we're gonna finish this up, and, uh, and then we'll do the final seasoning and we'll wrap this video up. All right, thanks guys. All right, we are done with the cooking process. So just to confirm, the pork went in the oven at noon. Uh, I took it out, sliced it, and put it in the smoker at four, and it's now about 7.15 p.m. So that gives you an idea of the amount of time it takes to cook. Um, it's tender, falling apart. I didn't have to cut or shred it. You know, sometimes with shredded pork recipes, you're supposed to use the fork. If you do it right, you don't have to even do that. Just the, the process of touching it with the tongs, it just falls apart. So um, I, I, I have been trying it because it's delicious. And, and so it could use a little bit more seasoning. Um, and that's why earlier I said not to put too much salt in the beginning. So. Uh, at this point, you can either add more flavor uh, in the form of carne asada seasoning or whatever it is you, you choose. Um, you could do a recipe of like onion powder and garlic powder, um, and then you could salt separately. That would be really good as well. Um, if you get a seasoning like this, like a carne asada seasoning, it's, it's, it's a generally a good uh, mix. Um, so <clears throat> I'm gonna add a little bit more carne asada seasoning and I'm gonna add some more salt because there's, you know th these are different flavors I don't necessarily want it to taste too much like the carne asada seasoning but I, I may want it saltier so uh, so you just add this is nice and hot so any seasonings you put on it kind of cook in um, and the flavors really develop and remember too, you can always add more flavor or salt to this after when you serve it. If you make a taco, uh, you can add lime and cilantro and any kind of flavors you want at that point as well. Uh, of course, you can add barbecue sauce to this at this point. I tend to think that's kind of a shame. This is so good. It doesn't need to be covered with a sauce to enjoy it. So I would say definitely Enjoy this uh, without sauce initially, and then add as much sauce as you think it needs, but this does not need sauce. So the key, the key to making delicious food is to taste it. If it tastes good, then it tastes good, right? No matter what the recipe says. All right, I'm gonna add a little more salt. And this is good now. Um, and like I said, we can add more salt or flavor to it uh, in our serving preparation. So I'll just show you here. You can see the steam coming off this. Again, I haven't shredded this. I haven't pulled it. I think uh, pulled pork is a misnomer. 
Um, you, if you just touch it, it falls apart. So if you have to pull it, then that's not tender enough. So um, you can see this is a lot of food. This cost about uh, $30. And uh, I don't know, it doesn't, doesn't get much better, cheaper or more affordable than this. So um, you can even put this on a baked potato with some cheese and you've got a really cheap meal. So anyways, I hope you guys enjoy. If you end up making it, please let me know. I'd love to see what you guys do on Facebook. So, uh, or YouTube or wherever you see this. All right, thanks guys. Um, I'll, do, I'll do more of these if you guys like them, thanks.